And let's talk more about this with uh, Morgan Ortegas and Dagan McDowell, who both join us now. Morgan, as Deirdre said, Pennsylvania is really a weird one because they have these delegates that are, so you can go out to uh, Cleveland and do whatever they want. And we thought, um, and maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves, we thought Cruz would do well with those delegates. But to Deirdre's point, it looks like Trump actually did much better than expected. So this is, none of this looks good for Cruz, right? I think it's going to be really tough for Cruz going into Indiana. If the polls that came out today that showed Trump 15 points ahead of, of Cruz, then, then that's a washout for him. So you have to ask yourself, Cruz has actually ran a very smart campaign over the past few months as it relates to getting these delegates. But so the question is, why are some of these delegates reportedly in yeah. North Dakota and Pennsylvania starting to switch? And I think the reason why is because Cruz, the Cruz campaign is not, has not effectively made the case that they can beat Hillary Clinton in November. And I think the Trump campaign is making that case more effectively, and that's likely why you're seeing some of these delegates who have been for Cruz that are wavering quite I a bit. I also don't think he looks like a winner, Dagan, right now. I mean, right. like, in 08, you know, <laughs> when we went through it with Clinton Obama, remember everybody talked about the super delegates. Once Obama, then Senator Obama, took the lead, all those super delegates, which is a little different, but on the Democratic side, they all flipped to him because he was going to win. I mean, they were backing the winner. The stench of losing right. makes people switch like that. There's oh, no yeah. greater aphrodisiac than winning. <laughs> And that, and it's well, not that Ted Cruz hasn't proved that, I, I'll disagree with Morgan on this, it's not that Ted Cruz hasn't proved that he can beat Hillary Clinton, it's that Ted Cruz hasn't proved that he can beat Donald Trump after right. New York in those five states last week where Donald Trump got more than 50% of the vote. It was such a washout for the Cruz campaign. I think more and more of these delegates are like, wait a minute, I'm not so ideologically tied to this guy. I just want to get behind somebody who can actually win this nomination. And they're roughly uh, 100 and more, they're, they're more more than 150 of these unbound delegates. And Donald Trump, even if he comes up short of that 1237, even after California, he's just got to lock up enough of those. And even losing Indiana, he's only six, by some estimates, he's only 68 delegates short of that 1237. So he's got those days, 41 between the California primary and the Republican convention in July yep. to sew them up. And the other thing, we were just looking at Trump there from one of his rallies. He has two more in Indiana today. The, we, when we see Trump, go out and make this argument. I, I think it's an effective argument, Morgan, that he basically says to people, listen, if I'm close, you got to give it to me. And the reason I say it's effective is because people, regular people look at that, and every time we poll them, it's seven or eight out of yeah. ten that say, yeah, if he's close and he has the most delegates, he should win. And I wonder if that's affecting the actual delegates, the human beings who are delegates. What I'm hearing from some of the delegates and, and people that I'm talking to in, in, the, in the party is, is people are interested in party unity. This is something that I've been preaching for months, and I think it's been a really long primary race. So I think, um, it, it especially if it's a wipeout tomorrow, I think a lot of the delegates, a lot of the people going into the convention are going to be more interested in unifying the party. By the way, is that realistic, starting though, to focus at this point? on the general election. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a great point. So here, the way I see it is there is, there is still a faction of the party, the Bill Crystal, the National review right. crowd who say never Trump. I think that well, will the majority of the party unify around Trump? Likely. Will there be a, a smaller part of the party that does not unify him that says never Trump? Um, I think so. I think what those think, people Dagan? are going to exist. So how does that play out in November? In terms of pulling I the think, whole thing together. I think that there's one stat that is undeniable that will pull people together that Donald Trump has already gotten more than 10 million in right. the popular vote. Let me just 